You might have found out that there is a website that checks if your online accounts have been compromised by hackers. So you enter in your email address and oh no, you have been pwned. Hackers now know the passwords that you used on all these services. But do they really know your password? Well, as it turns out, that might not actually be the case. And to understand why, let's take a look at what options companies have to protect your passwords and safely store them so that even when hackers get access to their systems, your password stays safe. There are three ways a company can store your password. They can store it in plain text, use encryption on it, or use what's called a hash function. Let's go quickly over each one of these and let's start with the most basic one, plain text. This is obviously the most dangerous way of storing passwords. If hackers breach the company's database, they get to see all the passwords of the users. And since a lot of people have the bad habit of using the same password for multiple accounts, it's likely that one compromised password could lead to more compromised accounts. Now, you might think that companies aren't silly and that none of them store our passwords in plain text. However, you would be very wrong in thinking that. Past breaches have showed us that top companies with millions of users weren't adequately protecting passwords. A possible alternative to plain text storage is encryption. You take the password of the user and, before you store them, encrypt them with an encryption key. This would prevent hackers from obtaining the real password of users, but it's still quite risky. Underneath the encryption layer is still a plain text password. And so if an attacker manages to steal the encryption key as well, he can unlock all the passwords. The problem with encryption is that it is designed to work in two ways. You can encrypt the user's password to keep it safe, but you can also decrypt it to reveal the password again. Encryption is very practical when you want to share data in a secure way, but not great if you want to prevent hackers from breaching your password. And that brings us to the third technique of storing passwords, and that's by using a hash function. How does that work? Well, a hash function takes an input that could be a piece of text like your password, or it could be a file, and it turns that into a string of text that always has the same length. There are many different hash functions available, but this is what the SHA-3 hash of Hello World looks like. Hash functions are very different from encryption because they only work in one way. You can calculate the hash of a password, but you cannot take a hash and turn it back into the original data. And that is an interesting property to have. By using hashes, companies can verify that you're logging in with the correct password without having to store your actual password. However, they aren't perfect either. Most hashing algorithms are optimized for speed. The more hashes per second they can calculate, the better. And that makes them vulnerable against brute force attacks. By simply calculating every hash of every possible password, an attacker can reverse the hash function. A modern GPU can do this with the speed of 292 million hashes per second, so it's only a matter of time before a hashed password is cracked using this technique. And if that's not fast enough, hackers can also use rainbow tables to further accelerate the process. These are lists of pre-computed hashes that can be used to quickly find weak and commonly used passwords. The speed of a hash function is a positive thing in certain areas, However, when it comes to storing passwords, you don't want this property. And then there is a second problem, and that happens when users share the same password. If both Alice and Bob have the password query, the hashes of their passwords will be identical. So when a hacker cracks the hash of this password, he also knows the other. Now, you might think that's not a big deal because it's very unlikely that different people will use the same password. Well, think again. The password query has been found more than 3 million times in data breaches. To make matters even worse, here's the top 10 most used passwords in 2017. Not the strongest of passwords. To defend against these types of attacks, we can add what's called a salt to the password before we hash it. The salt is just some random data, but it ensures that the hash of your password will always be unique, even if others use the same password. So if Bob and Alice both use the password QWERTY, their hashes will be completely different. So if an attacker cracks Bob's password, he can't link that password to Alice and he has to start his cracking attempts all over again. This technique prevents hackers from cracking a bunch of passwords in one go. It makes a brute force attack slower, but still very much possible. So to solve this, 
We have to take a look at another technique, which is using a special hash function, which is deliberately being slowed down. Example of these are bcrypt, sCrypt, or argon2, and they completely neutralize brute force attacks. These algorithms take a password as input along with a salt and a cost. This last one is very interesting. The cost defines the number of rounds the algorithm goes through and this effectively slows it down. Now over time our computers become faster and so brute force attacks against these algorithms becomes easier. And that's because they can simply try more combinations in a shorter time span. All we have to do to counter this is increase the cost parameter so the algorithm remains resistant against these types of attacks. Pretty genius. So those are the three options that a company has to store and protect your passwords. But why settle for just one method if we can use multiple? You can be greedy enough when it comes to security. This multi-layer protection is used by Dropbox for instance. They take your password and start by running it through a simple hash function without assault. This is their first line of defense. They then take the hash and run it through the bcrypt algorithm with a salt and a cost of 10. This prevents brute force attacks. And finally, the resulting hash is encrypted with the advanced encryption standard or AES for short. The encryption key for this is not stored in their database, but is instead kept separately. So if an attacker breaches the Dropbox database, they will have to peel away each protective layer around your password and that will take a lot of time. In fact, the cracking attempt would likely be more costly than what they get in return for compromising your account. So time for a conclusion then. If your account has been compromised, it's best to change your password immediately. However, depending on the security measures of the company that was compromised, it might be possible that hackers haven't been able to retrieve your password. And that's thanks to the magic of hash functions and cryptography in general. So now you know how companies can safely store your passwords. That was it for this video. If you learned something from it, hit the thumbs up button and consider getting subscribed. And as always, thank you very much for watching.